Hello and welcome to the assembly video, instructional video for my Blade Runner Blaster. If you haven't already picked up the files, they're available over at punishprops.com for an incredibly fair price. These are my uh, prototype parts. I'm going to go through how I put them together. First is the hardware. I'll have a list of all the screws and, and rods and springs and everything you'll need to put it together uh, linked down below. They're Amazon affiliate links if you want to grab them for yourself. I used all metric stuff. You can go with what I use. You can go with something similar that you might have. It's not critical. You will need some taps. So I've got these taps right here. These are just metric taps that go right in the drill. Perfect for drilling out plastic, 3D printed parts. I will say real quick too, I printed all of my parts in ABS except for these black parts which are done on the Form 2 right here. If you're printing in PLA, your results may vary. That's uh, for you to figure out for printing everything. Everyone's got a different printer and uh, different uh, tools available to them. For the assembly, I've got a bunch of these hex head uh, Allen keys. I've got a little screwdriver here and some pliers. I also have some sandpaper and a little file here to clean up any of the parts to make sure that they all fit together. All of these parts are drilled and tapped but some of the holes are drilled through and some of them are tapped. So for example, this piece here is gonna have a couple of these small screws go through, but the printed hole is a little bit small. So I figured out that this eighth inch bit is the right size to just go through and carefully enlarge that hole so that the screw fits through that way. So the screws go through there and then to attach this piece here, these holes need to be tapped. So I've got the appropriate size tap here. These are M3 screws. This is an M3 tap and I can just run it through that hole. It'll enlarge it and add the threads. Like so. Now I can put that piece in there. Put this on the right side and using my Allen wrench, screw it together. And there's more in there, another part goes on there, and so on until this piece is all put together. I do have this lovely diagram that shows which kinds of screws go where. Um, for the most part, the lengths on these, you can tinker with a little bit, um, but sometimes it matters whether or not two screws are gonna meet in the middle, like right here and here. You want to make sure that they aren't too long, otherwise you can't screw them in all the way. You'll figure it out as you go, and you'll figure out which holes need to be drilled a little bit bigger than the screw, and which ones need to be threaded. So for example, this one here, the screw goes through that and gets threaded into there. And then you can take the appropriate screw and put it together. So that one gets an M3 socket that is 10 millimeters long, and then the back of it is an M3 cap screw by eight millimeters long. There we go. That piece is all screwed together. Now there are a couple of really tiny parts, or screws. These M8 screws, let's use this as an example, I've actually shortened that screw a bit using my belt sander. You can buy these screws that are only four millimeters long. I didn't have any, so I just sanded them down. This particular screw ends up going here, and we don't want it poking through too much on the other side, otherwise it will hinder the movement of some of the other parts. So that's why I shortened that one. I've got these um, engineer pliers, I think they're called, and uh, they're pretty great for holding round things straight on, so I just hold it like that and carefully push it into my belt sander to shorten it. I think that's just about all the notes. I can start putting this fella together, starting with the receiver here and the triggers and this whole mechanism. This, is a, this part's a little complicated and a little tricky to get it to work. I'm gonna start by putting my pins in the body here. This is kind of what everything hinges on. We'll start with that guy. 
this is where the hammer goes and it'll it'll rotate as you as you fire it there's this tiny little catch here that goes in like so and levers on a little axle now for the rods I, I've linked to a bunch of assorted brass rods uh, but I, I use these this is I think I got this on eBay just a really thin brass tube that fits right through there if you can't find the right brass tube when you're drilling out these holes, for example, use the 1 16th inch bit, you can get these bits really cheap, drill the hole and then cut that off and just use that part as the pin. I'm gonna use this bit here. I'll just cut it like that. So there we go, I've got a little, little axle that goes through this there and will help this part pivot and rotate around. Now, for all the springs, I'm using these little springs I got from the hardware store or from the hobby store. They're really kind of weak, which is, is good for this one. I'm actually gonna cut it a little short so it's not quite so stiff. And then this, the diameter of this is what needs to fit in the hole on that and the hole on this. So I need to drill it a tiny bit bigger. And I'm gonna carefully Drill this a little bit bigger. I don't want to go all the way through. And then the spring should fit in there. Like that. Now, for this, I am going to glue, put a little bit of glue. This, this piece is so, so finicky. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of glue, put my spring in there. These springs have a habit of running away. And then I've got a little bit of my super glue activator we'll just tack that down and we're good to go the hole in here needs to be the same diameter so i'm gonna do that so now this tiny spring can go in that hole and then our pin can go through there should be just enough force from that spring to hold that pin in like so so it should be very, very weak. And that seems just about enough. So that goes on there. The next part will be this trigger. And I've got a pin for that as well. But before I do that, I'm gonna put a spring in here. So this is those same springs, I've doubled it up. There's two of them on there. And again, that's gonna get drilled out. In there and in here, which looks like I already did. And I'm also gonna glue this into place, like so. So just a tiny bit of glue. And a tiny bit of activator, like so. And now this isn't going anywhere. Before installing that, I'm going to get my pin started, like so in there and then this spring goes into that hole and the pin goes through to hold it into place like so now the idea here is that there will be a spring holding this down and as you pull the trigger that lets it go and the end of the trigger right there needs to go beyond that catch. What I've found is a combination of altering the strengths of this spring, which should be very weak, and this spring, which should be quite strong to be able to return it, and potentially sanding the end of this to be nice and smooth so that the uh, end of the trigger only grazes it on the way back. So that's really what we're going for. The forward trigger just has a spring in it and a pin, just so that it can flex a little bit. Uh, I'll do that real quick and we'll move on to the handle. The real action from this fella comes from this threaded rod. This is a 632, I think. Um, it's just small enough to fit inside the spring I have. I need, do need a catch on the end of this um, to push against, so it's not pushing directly against the hammer. To do that, uh, one of the ways I figured this out was to take a couple of nuts that are 632s or whatever ones you use and employ a jam nut. So these two nuts I'm going to torque into one another, like so. So 
These won't rattle off. They're pretty much locked in place. I do need this end to be rounded though and the back of it to be flat. So here's what I do. Take this, chuck it up in my drill and then spin this against a belt sander or a grinder to sort of sculpt it. Kind of like you're using a lathe. So I'll go do that and then we'll be ready to put this together. There's our cool rounded off end thing there. I'm just gonna give it a quick sanding, careful. That got a little hot on the belt sander. Now that should fit right in there and our spring fits right in there. So we want that, that action. And I'll show you how that goes together. First, I'm gonna put some more pins in the receiver. Got my pins. The handle can go on next and that goes right over those. There we go, handle is nice and secure. The hammer goes in like that. And then on this side, we can feed this through. Oops, sorry, this way, we can feed that through. And That goes in like that, and that goes in like that. And that's the action we're going for right there. Once that's all good to go, and once you've tinkered with everything, this caps everything off and holds it all into place. It goes on the pins. Whoop. And this gets a two millimeter screw. Now, all of the two millimeter holes, I do not recommend tapping them. I would use these screws to tap them. I wouldn't drill them or tap them. Um, they're just so tiny that you just use the screw to cut the threads and you're good to go. So that is the trigger mechanism ready to go. The next part will be the cylinder. And the original one, these two parts here, I turned on the lathe out of metal. Um, I've included these files to do it another way. So the pin goes in, there's a nub on the end of it for the spring to go, and then that goes in the end of this tube, like that. Now I recommend gluing this closed or uh, just some tape. Got some thin packing tape here. Just gonna cut out a little strip of it and wrap that around the seam to hold. Uh-oh. <laughs> you can see how tricky these tiny bits are. That spring is gone. So I'm just gonna grab another one and put it all together. Goes in there. This gets closed. And the tape should hold it shut. Now this, can go through there and you want it to poke out a bit, just a little bit. That's what catches and holds it closed. This goes in like so. You can see I've added a little bit of aluminum tape to make that a little more snug. That's one way you could do that if you wanna adjust how, how easily this flops out. To attach it, that goes in there. The trigger guard goes over it and in this case I'm taking a three by 15 or a M3 by 15 and that's what's gonna hold that all together. Like so. And then an M3 by eight cap goes in here to put it all together. That gets tightened up. That gets nice and tight. Now when this gets pushed in, it will lock closed. It won't pop open. To open it, we need this switch that goes right in there. You will have to drill a hole in the end of it. And this is one of those two millimeter 
threaded tap. So I wouldn't tap that, I would just take one of your two millimeter screws and thread it in there. The idea is this screw head, which you can install, usually install backwards, and then turn around. When pushed forward through that rear hole, will release that catch and the whole thing can pop open. You can adjust how far this thing pushes by unscrewing it a little bit. I took this back apart to show you how this works. There's a hole there and that bit pops through and this with a screw on the end of it is used to poke it out. So this tiny screw goes in there and the depth of it sets just how far it will push the pin out. So it's gonna rest like that and then when you push it forward, it clears that pin. So you have to tinker with that a little bit to get it to work, but once, you're, once you got it, it shouldn't be a problem. Now that I've got this all set, I'm gonna hit it with a tiny bit of super glue to fill in the head of it there so that the my pin doesn't get stuck on that. And I'm also going to glue the threads so that it doesn't unscrew. So now this part can be installed like so. And I'm gonna put one of these shorter M3 by eight screws in there to hold it in place. Now this doesn't need to be really uh, tight. It just needs to keep this thing from moving, moving away from us. We just wanna have it just tight enough that it still kind of moves, but doesn't rattle around too much. So the idea here is this closes, snaps shut, it's locked in place, and then when I push this forward, just like that. <laughs> and again, you're gonna have to tinker with this, tinker with that screw. I actually made the head of that screw smaller so that it would fit. I think I made it too small. Uh, but yeah, once you tinker with it a bit, you can get it to work perfectly, and there you go. Onward. So that is most of the mechanical stuff. Everything else is just the uh, parts of the prop to start putting together. I can go with the handle here, and there's just some screws all the way around it, so I can get those going. Now again, the hole in this piece was oversized and the hole in this piece was tapped. And I did that all the way around. This is where my handy diagram is gonna help me remember what length of screw I use. I've got one screw on the bottom here, which is an M3 by 15. So that goes in there. There's that. This fella goes on the bottom. Then the grips go on. Now these holes are the same hole all the way through. And I found that these strip very easily. So you wanna be careful and you wanna make sure you use the correct length of screw. For this, the top ones get 10 millimeter long screws and the bottom ones get 12 millimeter long screws. And that's so that I get as much of the thread engaged as possible without the screws colliding in the middle of this part. Again, don't over torque it. It's so easy to strip those threads. There we go, the back half of the gun is looking good. We can put the top on now, but a couple pieces have to go on at the same time. This screw here, I actually added compared to the original design as just another place for there to be more of the barrel connected to the frame. Again, this is a two millimeter screw and I threaded it using that screw. I did not use a two millimeter tap. I wanna be careful with this. We'll flip it over and we'll grab this part here. That goes over it. 
and a 15 millimeter screw goes through this piece, through that piece, and into the hole on the side of the receiver there, which has been threaded. And that holds a lot of that together. Then before moving forward, we can take our barrel, and that just sort of pops in like so. I can then add a couple of 12 millimeter long screws through here. And again, this was drilled through and the hole in the barrel was threaded like that. Do the same thing on the other side, like so. There we go, that gets threaded in there. That gets threaded in there. Cool. Now the magwell goes on and over here we have another hole that goes just about all the way through. That's going to be a 12 millimeter screw that goes through this, through this, and threaded into the receiver. So like that, make sure everything is lined up and tighten it down. I also added, this is new to the design, uh, one of these M3 by 8 cap screws goes through there and attaches the magwell to the barrel. This is just to give it a little bit more rigidity and strength. So that goes through like that. Then we take our big one. This is an M5 by 35. That goes through the bottom. There's a rounded bit. That goes on the top to accommodate the bottom of the barrel. This goes through and thread it into the barrel like so. Tighten it down. This really helps kind of make everything feel more, more rigid. We're almost there. On this side, this fella goes in there. It attaches to the swing arm using an M3 by 15. This goes through there and into the threaded hole on the swing arm. And there's a couple of tabs on there that help lock it so it can't rotate. The original one had two screws there and I, I changed it to be able to do it with only one. And it seems like it worked out okay. So that's on the side there now and you should be able to use that. There we go. Should be able to use that to help lever this out like that. This fella goes right in the front and another cap screw goes in there to lock it down. Then this is the bolt slide looking thing here. We'll start with this fella. This is the front of it and you can tell that there are counter bores to accommodate some of those M3 by 8 cap head screws. This goes that way. You can see there, whoop, there is a little bit of a rounded bit right there. That goes backwards and this gets threaded onto that. That goes there. And then the handle goes right there. And again, some more M3 by 8 screws. Finally, the uh, end cap here, you can see I printed this on the, on the form two. Uh, that goes over, there's a socket for it, that goes over there. And I found that sometimes this eight millimeter screw is enough, but that's actually really easy to get stripped. So sometimes I'll put a longer screw in there, like an M3 by 12, just to get a little bit more of the thread engaged. You want this to be able to rotate still, but then this whole thing can get slid right down through there. There are grooves for this rear bolt part to slide together. So it can really only go one way. You can see that it pokes out the end like that. And this should be able to close all the way. And then we put a, an M8 or M3 by eight screw through here. And this keeps this from falling out the back. So that can go all the way through and it keeps this from being able to pop out. It, it slides right in there. 
this little bit of decoration goes in front of it and that uses a shorter screw, one of those four millimeter long screws. Otherwise it will interfere with the bolt. So that goes in there. Also on this side, I have an M4. Uh, I guess you could use an M3, but I have an M4 screw that I've glued, or actually just pressure fit onto this weird knob looking thing. So that can just get threaded in by hand. I also got this little teeny little screw that goes on the end and I screwed an M3 screw into there and then I cut the end off and ground it flat so that I have a little bit of thread left to screw that in right here. There we go. Finally, there are these two tiny little bits here and really tiny little screw holes down in there for a couple of M2 screws. Again, you really want to pre-thread those with the screw, not a tap. And then these bits here, where the screw goes, you may have to go in with like a Dremel or something to just sort of make sure that the screw head can fit right in there. And then this gets screwed in through the bottom so that you can't really see it, just like so. Nice and snug, and the other one. There we go, so that hopefully these guys line up with that guy, just like so. The last thing to do is just to take our magazine and pop it in, like so. Now I did have to put some extra like super glue on the detent on here. Um, your results may vary depending on shrinkage or your 3D print, um, but I, I bolstered that a little bit so it's a little bit better of a positive lock. And that is the full assembly of this 3D print. Now this may take you a couple of tries. You may strip some threads, you may have to reprint some parts. I recommend doing all of this assembly before you do any sanding or painting or finishing on this prop. That way you really know what to expect and you don't end up goofing up a print after you've already done a bunch of sanding and printing or painting on it. Uh, but yeah, that is the full assembly. That should be everything you need to know. Again, punishprops.com for the files. They're less than $10. Uh, I think well worth it for such a complicated piece. I hope that you have fun putting yours together. I hope you have fun printing it. Um, if you do, please tag me on social media at Chinbeard on Twitter and Instagram. I'd love to see how yours turns out. So thank you so much for purchasing the files and thanks so much for hanging out while I put together my version of the Blade Runner Blaster. Uh, of course, this one here is my fully finished one. So I took all of these pieces and I molded and cast them. And uh, this is how it turned out after casting. And I'm really, really stoked with how it turned out. Uh, so that's an example of how you could take a 3D print like this and turn it into something like this. Of course, we have a video on our main channel showing that whole thing off. Uh, thank you again so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next build.